I had the chance to get my hands on the Cell AM1 mixing desk for a couple of days. Besides their normal stereo mono audio channel, it features their very unique CV channel. You could see the CV channel as, first of all, as a very basic stereo channel. It has an input, input section. Um, it has a very sophisticated, good sounding three band EQ consisting of a low pass, a high pass, and a fully parametric mid-band. But now you cannot only control the available parameters with their corresponding knob, but you could also use CV to, to control basically every parameter with a few exceptions, of course. For that, you could either use internal CV sources that I'll show you in a second, or feed in some external CV sources from your modular system or whatever synthesizer you use. Now let me give a very brief overview um, over the different sections of the channel. All white-framed regions are CV sources. We have the fluctuation unit first, which is a um, random generator where you can set the speed of it. Secondly, we have the envelope follower with the controllable threshold or called sensitivity with the timing constants and it will also put out a gate signal. Down below we have the very sophisticated but very effective three band EQ comprising a low pass filter, a high pass and a fully parametric mid-band. This is where things get really interesting because you can control every parameter of the EQ um, via CV. Further, it has a dry and wet control over the low pass and the high pass filter, which it's not very usual to see that. So you could do parallel EQing, which is very interesting. You could even have CV control over the insert, which is phenomenal. Down below we have the stereo bass section which goes from mono to stereo to difference. Um, you can of course CV control that. We have six auxiliary sends which again are fully CV controllable. We have a panic section which is as you would assume fully uh, CV controllable. We have the, the volume section down here. Instead of a sliding fader we have on the normal channels, we have a rotary knob. Also, we have a busing system for both audio and CV signals. Down at the bottom, we have a very simple, basic, but yet effective envelope generator with controllable uh, timing constants. You can trigger it manually by a little push button or you could feed in an external gate to trigger it. On top of that, we have the fixed voltage, which will simply deploy a adjustable fixed voltage, as the name implies. It will operate between negative five and positive five volts. And last but not least, we have the CV summing section, which will sum any two CV signals, be it internal or external. Further, it has two more CV sources, a red noise and a brown noise. So I'll, I'll just very quickly show you how the CV control works. On the right side we have the parameters. Next to it we have the CV source. You can set this would be the fluctuation, this would be the gate, the sum, the fixed voltage. We have the five CV inputs on the back. Um, we have the envelope generator. And next to the source, we have the mod amount knob, which will control the modulation amount. It's a bipolar knob. You can go from positive to zero to negative. I have this very simple baseline um, coming from my modular system um, from the Swayman BLD2. What I have done is using the fixed voltage CV signal and put it out of the channel strip, feed it into the modular system. Um, I'm controlling the decay and the um, cut off of the filter. 
So I have both parameters at the same knob now. If, you, if I turn it, it will turn both up the filter and the decay time. Now let me also use a reverb which is on auxiliary send 6. Let me set it to fixed voltage, the V, and then turn up the mod amount to positive. So if I turn the fixed voltage up, it will actually turn this knob. That was a little bit distorted, so let me set the filter. Set the mod amount to negative, so what will happen if I turn up the, the fixed voltage, this knob will go down. That was maybe a little bit too much, so now it's a good time to use the uh, dry wet control because it's a little bit too much filtering like that so what I do now with only one knob I'm controlling one two three, four, five different parameters on the modular and the channel strip itself. Turning this knob up is the same as I would do that. But as I don't have four different hands, it's very handy to use just one knob to turn both parameters on the modular system and to control the filter cutoff and the dry wet as well as the auxiliary send. Now I have um, a square wave patched into the channel, which is just a square wave, obviously. I will turn down the filter. And now set the fluctuation, the random generator, to control the cutoff. goes all the way to audio rate. But let me set something more interesting. As the envelope um, generator is still patched into my modular, into the pitch, I can um, just trigger the pitch and you will hear it change. of reverb. So as I hit the button also the, the auxiliary send will open up and send the signal into the reverb. Now that you have a first brief overview how this thing works um, I will try a little jam to make some music with it actually because the previous examples were just to show you how this thing works. I have this very simple chord from, f coming from Logic. It's just a continuously running chord. Nothing happens. Every sound shaping element that you will hear now is taking place inside the CV channel. I have the derp for dark time sending out two different CV sequences going into both channels as well as a trigger, trigger triggering the envelope. I will use that the envelope to open up the volume control. Let me 
also engage the filter. I'm using the sequence from the dark time to open it up. Let me bring in the 808. I will use the same sequence, actually do the, do the same thing, sequencing the low pass filter. Or maybe I will use not the sequence, but let's use the fluctuation to make it a little bit more random and interesting. Yeah, like that. Setting the speed. I'll bring some other elements. Using the AM1 for a week now showed me how sophisticated this desk was designed to be not only a very serious mixing tool, but a very serious instrument. It really invites itself to be played, to be creative with. You can transform something very boring into something totally different very quickly. It would require a lot of instruments and tools to do that without the AM1. There is so much love to detail on it. It would take hours to explain all the features, but there, it was built with so much love to detail. Um, I was very surprised using it, and it will be hard to give it away again. <laughs>